In our previous several videos, we have looked at how to do two sample Z two sample Z inference by hand. This is especially important if you have been presented with summary statistics, such as we've been provided here. In this case, we are given the sample proportion and the sample uh, the sample proportion and the sample sizes for both of the two groups for the cash for quitters example. That is, we know that in our sample, 15% of the people in the financial reward groups quit smoking and 5% of the people in the non-financial reward groups quit smoking. And we know that we had 878 total volunteers, which means that there were 439 people in each of those two groups. What we don't have is a data set containing the total number of obs the 878 people, each of which are in their own row, and we don't have the quitting status for each of those 878 people, and we don't have the group status for each of those 878 people. All we have are the end results of the study. Normally, JUMP would not be able to do that. If we were to open JUMP, we're presented with a data table, and we have to enter, and JUMP expects a data set with either uh, frequency counts or the actual status of uh, the cases and the, the variables for each case, so the each column to be a row. But one of the, <clears throat> excuse me, one of the add-ins that I asked you to add at the beginning of the semester was the Statistics Calculator 3 add-in. And when we go to that, we can see that this is going to allow us to do a whole bunch of things that JUMP normally would not do for us. Among them, for example, is a hypothesis test for two proportions and a confidence interval for the difference in two proportions. When we select, for example, hypothesis test for two proportions, it says to choose the input method. The raw data are the summary statistics. If you choose raw data, then you have to have the data entered in a jump data set. So that would mean each row is a case and each column is a variable. We don't have that. All we have are the summary statistics. So if I select summary statistics, this is going to open up a dialog box and it allows me to enter the summary counts for each of the groups. So let's walk through what this dialog box is expecting for us to conduct a z-test of two proportions. The first option here is to choose the type of alternative analysis hypothesis. So we can either have a two-tailed alternative, so that is that the true that is that the true proportions are just different. That is that there is an association in this case between the type of uh, incentive uh, provided for quitting, but we don't know whether that means that the two groups are the same or the two groups are different because having the financial incentive improves the quitting status or the f having the financial incentive uh, makes people less likely to quit. So we just think that there's an association, but we don't know which direction. The second option is that P2 minus P2, P1 is less than the hypothesized difference, that is one-tailed, but notice the direction that JUMP is taking the subtraction, it's doing P2 minus P1. Or that P2 minus P1 is greater than the hypothesized difference, so that is ha not having the financial reward improves the status, so that is that smokers are uh, less likely to quit. The next thing is that we can choose the variance option we're going to use the pooled estimate of variances because that's how we should do it, right? So if we're assuming equal standard deviations, or excuse me, if we're assuming equal population proportions under this hypothesized difference that the two population proportions are the same, then we should use the pooled estimate. The only time that you should not use the pooled estimate for the standard error is if your hypothesized difference, P2 minus P1, is not equal to zero. So if you're using this uh, non equal to zero, so if you're not hypothesizing that the two proportions are the same, then you should choose the second option. But because we are always, for, for the purposes of this class, because we're always assuming that the two proportions are the same for a null hypothesis, you're going to use the pooled estimate. So then we're going to go through, we're going to do the sample one count and the sample one size. So the sample one count is the number of successes in that first group. In our case, the first group is the smoker group or excuse me, not the smoker group, it's the financial incentive group. And we found that when we did N1 times P1 hat, we got 66 people quit smoking in the first group. So it's looking for the 66. It's looking for a count, not a proportion. So we had 66 people quit smoking in the first group. There were 439 people in that first group. 
Then it wants the same thing for the second group. So in sample uh, count two, uh, we want the number of people who successfully quit smoking in the non-financial rewards group. Well, there were 5% of the people who quit smoking in the second group, which translated to 22 successful quitters. So that would be 22. For sample two size, that would be 439. There were 439 people in sample two. So notice it's looking for the number of successes and the sample size for group one, and then the number of successes and the sample size for group two. But notice also it's doing group two minus group one. So we are going to end up with a negative estimate because it's doing group two minus group one as opposed to the positive estimate that we came up with because we did group one minus group two. That's fine. Just jump is doing things in reverse order because it's doing things in reverse alphabetical order than we did. So make sure that you're being mindful of how you've interpreted your results. Um, <clears throat> from here, we are, we're good to go. We've entered our data and we can just hit or click anywhere or you could hit enter. So we have our sample one proportion is 0.15. Our sample two proportion is 0 0.05. The difference in proportions, notice P2 minus P1 is negative 0.1, whereas we got positive 0.1 because we did a, a P1 hat minus P2 hat. The standard error is the same because it's always going to be positive. The z-score is negative here because they did it in the reverse direction. They did P2 minus P1, whereas we wanted to do P1 minus P2. If we want to use this to find our p-value, we would have to make sure that we correct the, choose the correct alternative. We think that pi 1 minus pi 2 is greater than 0, so that means that pi 2 minus pi 1 is less than 0, so we would have to choose the correct alternative hypothesis. So our p-value is less than 0 0.0001, and that is what we got here. So make sure that if you do things in a reverse order than jump does, because jump is doing P2 minus P1 instead of P1 minus P2, you could change what P1 and P2 are, you can change what your groups are so that way you get things defined the way that you think that they should be, or you can just remember to pick the opposite direction for your alternative hypothesis and make sure that you're interpreting things uh, uh, in the opposite value. So you're going to get a different you're going to get the opposite test statistic and it, the opposite uh, effect size than you were expecting. I don't know why jump does it this way. It's a little ridiculous because who does P2 minus P1 ever? Okay, so that is how you do a two sample Z test in jump when all you have are summary statistics. We can use jump again to find our confidence interval. We will go to add-ins, statistics calculator three, and go to confidence interval for the difference in two proportions. So I don't know why they have this little space here, but it's just down here. So we have the same options. We can use raw data or we can use summary statistics. Again, we don't have the raw data. We don't have the individual results for every person in the study, but we do have the summary statistics of the final outcome. We're gonna do the same thing. For the sample one count, there were 66 people who successfully quit. There were 439 people in the first group. For sample two, 22 people successfully quit and 439 people in that second group. We want a confidence interval built at the 95% confidence level. I hit update results and I get my sample proportions and I get my standard error for the first group. I get my sample proportion for the second group and the standard error for that second group. I get the difference in proportions and again notice that they're doing group two minus group one. So I'm getting the opposite value than I would expect. If I want to do group one minus group two, I just multiply everything by negative one or I take the opposite values. We can see that it's giving me my Z critical value of 1.96 and it's giving me my lower and upper bound. Notice in our video, we did pi one minus pi two and our sample statistic was P one hat minus P two hat. And so that meant that our difference was positive 0.1 and our lower bound was positive 0 0.06 and our upper bound was positive 0.13. That's because we did things in the different direction. We subtracted pi, uh, P1 
P1 hat minus P2 hat and jump is doing things in the opposite direction. We're going to get the same interpretation and results. If P2 is less than P1 by 0.1, that means P1 is greater than P2 by 0.1. Similarly, if we believe that the upper limit for the difference P2 minus P1 is 0 0.06, then the lower limit for P1 minus P2 is positive 0 0.06. So it's the same thing, we just have to be mindful of the direction of subtraction so that we can be consistent in how we interpret the results. All right, so that is how we can use jump to completely build the confidence interval for the difference in two proportions for us when all we have are summary statistics.